Hello, you beautiful bastards, and welcome to my so-called show. On this day, in the UK 20 years ago, a remake of the 1987 action thriller Man on Fire was released, replacing Scott Glenn with Denzel the Man Washington as the main protagonist, Creasy. Director Ellie Shuaqui, if I'm pronouncing that name right, with Tony still cooler than his brother Scott, and switching the Italian setting to Mexico City. And it was a pretty cool thriller. Violence, love, emotion, and pure rage, with Denzel Washington on Don't Give Two Fucks form. But 20 years later, does it still hold up? Well, slutty ladies and not so gentlemen, let's find out. This is Man on Fire. Oh, and better watch the film first before you go through this, because I will be spoiling the shit out of it. A man can be an artist in anything. It depends on how good he is at it. Creasy's art is dead. He's about to paint his masterpiece. The story follows a former assassin named John Creasy, played by Denzel Washington, who is now a broken down, suicidal alcoholic, traumatised by his violent past. Despite his reluctance, he is convinced by his friend Paul, played by Christopher Walken, to take the job of a bodyguard for a little girl called Lupita, played by Dakota Fanning, the daughter of wealthy automaker Samuel Ramos and his wife Lisa. On their first days together, it goes just about as well as you'd expect. You're being paid to be your bodyguard. Look at me. I'm not being paid to be your friend. I'm being paid to protect you. So no more questions. That's it. Period. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. But eventually they do end up bonding and Creasy even starts to find a reason to live. But unfortunately things go tits up as some kidnappers working for a crime lord named The Voice show up to take Lupita. Creasy tries to stop them but is shot down, leaving him in critical condition. And Lupita is captured and held to ransom. While Creasy is recovering, Samuel agrees to pay the ransom, only for things to go tits up at the drop, leading to Lupita getting killed. Fuck. Eventually, Creasy recovers and finds out the devastating news, and now he has only one thing left on his mind. I'm gonna kill him. Anyone that was involved, anybody who profited from it, anybody who opens their eyes at me. Such a man! I'd follow him to hell and back, I would! And with the help of reporter Mariana, played by Rachel Ticotin, and her regular shag federal agent Manuel, played by Giancarlo Giannini, Creasy sets out to exact revenge on everybody responsible for Peter's death. They make me feel all manly. But is the voice the only person involved in this dirty business? Man on Fire still fucking rocks, and while it doesn't reinvent the violent wheel of revenge, it still packs one hell of a punch two decades on. Tony Scott smartly didn't bring the action until the second half of the movie. He starts the film showing us the environment we have been thrown into, and it's not a pretty world. It's a world full of kidnappings, corruption, with the end results being unfortunate losses. It lets us know that no one is safe, but it also gives us a chance to get to know our characters, including the friendship between Paul and Creasy. These are both men who have done horrible things that continue to haunt them, and while Paul has moved on and found a way to deal with his violent past, Creasy has let it destroy him. He's a broken down alcoholic who's lost his way, taking the only job that'll hire him, unable to connect with the very person he's paid to protect. But it's also why the relationship between him and Peter work. Denzel Washington does a great job as the traumatised ex-hitman and Dakota Fanning really shines as the innocent and optimistic Peter. And credit where credit's due, even at such a young age, she almost gave her veteran co-stars a run for their money. But that's where the real heart of the story lies. We get to see that relationship slowly develop, with Priestley seeing Peter as an annoyance to eventually seeing her as someone precious to him. Through their friendship, he becomes human. And with him, 
Peter learns to be more motivated and sure of herself. Both Washington and Fanning have great chemistry and the relationship does feel genuine. And when she does get kidnapped and the ransom goes wrong, you can feel the rage boiling up inside of him. You know he's ready to unleash hell on earth. And when he does go on his little rampage, he does not fuck about. He is willing to take down anyone and anything to get to the bottom of what happened. And it gets bloody. <laughs> The man has zero fucks to give. We are now seeing the man he used to be, the man that has plagued him with unforgiving guilt for years, except this time he's not doing it for money, no orders, but for love. And just like his redemption with Peter, his rage doesn't feel rushed or phoned in. But it also does lead to a very emotional climax. And since I've already laid the spoiler warning, here it is. After blowing off the fingers of the voice's brother, he finds out Peter isn't actually dead. What a twist! and that the voice is willing to return her as long as he trades his life for hers as well as his brother's. And I'm not gonna lie, it's a fucking tearjerker. You alright? I didn't hurt you? Okay, you go home. Okay. Right. Where are you going? And it's a fitting ending. Creasy is a man whose life has been violence and pain, but his death will mean someone else gets a chance at life. As for the rest of the cast and the movie, the cast excel in their roles. Ticotin is likeable as the spunky reporter Mariana, and Giagini is very charming as haggard fed man well. And I do like the fact that these two are not only working with each other, but are also sleeping together. Their little back and forth does add levity to the dark tone. Walken brings real weight as Paul and the friendship he shares with Dental on screen never feels like two actors acting. They do feel like two people who have been through a lot together. Radhal Mitchell, while in a small role, does make the most of her screen time and does convince his Peter's mum, showing real strength and damn, she does not fuck about in this scene. I'm really sorry. I, I wish we had talked sooner, Senora. I'm really sorry. Now it is too late. Fuck off! Get the fuck out of my fucking house! And Mark Antony does well as Peter's dad, Sam, who may know more about the kidnapping than he should, while Mickey Rourke also brings the sleaze as Sam's lawyer, Jordan Kalfus. The action is hard-hitting, bloody and visceral, with Creasy tearing down the rundown streets of Mexico City. But there's also some flaws, especially the cinematography, and I'm not gonna lie, it can get fucking obnoxious. There's constant whip panning, zooming, blaring, flaring, frame cutting, shaking of the camera, and I know Tony Scott was a director with this very big bombastic style, but even his earlier stuff didn't go so overboard. And sorry to say this, but it almost dates the movie. Sometimes it works and adds to the drama. Over times, it just feels like overkill. But despite my complaints, this is still a well-crafted, violent, emotional, character-driven, complex revenge thriller with enough guns as well as heart. And just like a bomb shoved up a fat guy's ass, it's an absolute blast. And whether you beautiful bastards are northern, English or not, thanks for watching. And please remember to like, comment, share, subscribe and ring that bell in order to be notified. And if you wish to further support this channel, then the links are in the description below. But right now, that's me done, and I'm off to the pub.